And who presents this bride to this man? Her mother. Very good. Well done. Well said. Please want to kind of greet with each other a little bit. Not yet. <laughs> nice try, Keith. Come on up here. So you got to be on these cases, these guys all the time. You know, they're going to sneak something in there. Are you ready to breathe? <gasps> Good to have you here. God bless you. And thanks for you for all of you who've come, especially for long distance. I know some of you have come a long ways. Also, those who are up on, on uh, video, thank you for also tuning in at this time. I wish you could be here. And... Uh, this is going to be a great celebration. Just let you know, but this shouldn't take any more than, I don't know, two and a half to three hours. But it, it'll go back fast. So. But seriously, welcome everybody. I'll be explaining a few things as we go through the sacrifice of the Mass at this celebration. So let us pray. Oh God, who consecrated the bond of marriage by so great a mystery, that in the wedding covenant itself, you foreshadow the sacrament of Christ and his bride, the church. Grant, we pray, to these your servants that they may receive in faith, they may live out in deeds through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. The people say, Amen. So I ask you all, please be seated. I'll ask these two to come forward and we want to be seated up here. So ladies and gentlemen, this is the, what we commonly call the, the, the Catholic Mass. Many of you have been, are familiar with the Mass, some of you may not be. The Mass is divided into two principal parts. When we speak of the Liturgy of the Word, which we're going to hear some scriptures, and a little bit of a homily, and a few other things. And then a little bit later on, we have what we call the Liturgy of the Eucharist, with a little more probably formal prayers and things like that. And then we're going to ask the Lord to bless simple bread and wine to become of his, his precious body and blood. So I'm going to ask now, we'll, we'll start here. I'll ask, in fact, I'm going to ask uh, Ryan to come forward for our first reading, I believe it is. This is going to take from the book of, of the Old Testament, from Tobit, Old Tobit in the Old Testament. A reading from the book of Tobit. On their wedding night, Tobiah arose from bed and said to his wife, Sister, get up. Let us pray and beg our Lord to have mercy on us and to grant us deliverance. Sarah got up, and they started to pray and beg that deliverance might be theirs. They began with these words, Blessed are you, O God of our fathers. Praise be your name forever and ever. Let the heavens and all your creation praise you forever. You made Adam, and you gave him his wife Eve to be his help and support. And from these two, the human race descended. You said, it is not good for the man to be alone. Let us make, a, make him a partner like himself. Now, Lord, you know that I take this wife of mine, not because of lust, but for a noble purpose. Call down your mercy on me and on her and allow us to live together to a happy old age. They said together, amen, amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks, Ryan. We have now what's com commonly called a responsorial psalm. Do you have a cantor who's going to lead us in that? based on one of the Psalms. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise 
Praise Him, all you His angels. Praise Him, all you His hosts. Let all praise the name of the Lord. Praise Him, sun and moon. Praise Him, all you shining stars. Praise Him, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let all praise His name. You fruit trees and all you cedars, you wild beasts and all tame animals, you creeping things and winged fowl, let all praise his name of the Lord. Let the kings of the earth and all peoples the princes and all the judges of the earth, young men too and maidens, old men and boys, praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. Let all praise his name. His majesty is above earth and heaven, and he has lifted his horn above the people. Let all praise the name of the Lord. Thank you. We ask Monica now to come forward for our second reading. This reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Philippians. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord always. I shall say it again, rejoice. Your kindness should be known to all. The Lord is near. Have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Then the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Monica. Can I ask you all please now to stand for our gospel? reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, 
This is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves, because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends, because I have told you everything I've heard from my Father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated, everybody. Once again, I just want to thank you so much for being here on behalf of Keith and Rachel and their families. Thank you for making your way all the way over here for this. And uh, I apologize because of the, you know, the pandemic, we have to wear masks here. Um, but I uh, hope you understand. I'm sure we're familiar with these things. And uh, even though some people think it's conspiracy, but that's okay. But we're here to honor, and even in terms of kind of discomfort, to honor God. And that's what, that's what the weddings were really about. You know, a lot of couples can, first of all, let me do a little housekeeping. If anyone does need to use the restroom, the restrooms are downstairs through these double, these double doors. You can go downstairs. There's a stairway. Basically, in that corner area, there's the men's and women's restroom. If anyone needs an elevator, through the single door. So the stairway to this door, the single door, the elevator room. So. Um, also, you might be wondering, who's this up here? <laughs> This is St. Joseph. We, we just, today is May 1st. And um, so we, we wanted, to, we, uh, this is the year for the Catholics, uh, the year of uh, honoring St. Joseph as the, as the patron saint of the Universal Church. And it started uh, for us December 8th this last year, and it will be concluding December 8th, 2021. And uh, so Pope Francis, our Holy Father, basically designated this year to be a special year, a special year of grace. And, uh, and so it will mark the 150, 150th anniversary of back in, uh, uh, when, when, po when Pope Pius IX declared St. Joseph to be the patron saint of the Universal Church way back when. So this will be the 150th anniversary. So we, this morning at Mass, we dedicated this, this large icon, which will be somewhere here in the church. I'm not exactly where, sure. And the smaller one over here for our youth room. That's, what, that's what's this here. And um, speaking of which, you might not be aware of it. So we got a big, we got a big Saint Joseph and, baby, and child Jesus. So some people think that's Jesus up there, and, and Joseph down here. No, it's really, <laughs> it's really Jesus with Joseph up on top there. And uh, so he's he's the the, the father of, of the Holy Family. And so they chose this family. In fact, they chose this day, uh, Rachel and Keith, because of that. Not necessarily because of this, but because of the nature of. St. Joseph, in a very special day. So I want to congratulate you on that. Thank you. Um, just to go back here a little bit about the readings. In this first reading we had from the book of Tobit, I just want to touch on this a few things here. But Tobiah uh, was, 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 this younger, was the son of a man named Tobit. And he goes, he has a kind of a task that Tobit had told him to do. In the meantime, he, he falls in love with a gal named Sarah. And I'm not going to go through the details. It's too long for this time right now. But by and large, he got, he got permission from dad to marry Sarah. And so and they have the wedding. So this is their wedding night. This is, what's why the, this is important. So on their wedding night, this is why I really want to, again, spend a few moments with you up here. Tobiah rises from the bed and says to his wife, my sister, get up. Together, let us pray and beg our Lord to have mercy on us and to grant us deliverance. There's kind of a, kind of a little bit of history about that too. And uh, so she gets up as well. They begin to pray. The thing is, they put God first. And that's kind of the key in terms of all true good marriages, is putting God first. There's a lot of other things that are going to take you know, precedence in our life. 
you know, work, children, school, activities, friendships, things like this. Those are all important. But the number one thing that we always have to keep in front of us is God, is that number one. And so, and so he begins off by the simply saying, Blessed are you, Lord God, God of our fathers. Praise be your name, not us. Your name forever and ever. Let the heavens and all your creation praise you forever. For you made Adam. You gave him his wife, Eve, and so forth. You said, it's not good for man to be alone. Let's make a partner for him. And so we see the formation of Eve. O Lord, you know how I take this wife of mine, not because of lust, because that can happen, but for a noble purpose, something a higher calling. This is what this is really about. This is what St. Paul is trying to uh, you know, tell us in, in the first, in the second reading, in terms of higher values, in terms of the, you know, the things that are really important in life. So St. Paul writes in his letter to the, to, the, uh, to the Philippians, Rejoice in the Lord always. Now, those, why is that? Because God's grace is always for you. God will always love you, encourage you, and strengthen you. Satan won't. The devil is real. And he's basically to kind of bring doubt and suspicion and antagonisms, and basically rivalries, scenarios, that doesn't come from God. That comes from the evil one. And so you want to know to rejoice, to trust, even though sometimes we don't always feel it. That's okay. You don't always have to, have to feel things. You do it as an act of, of will, an act of faith. To rejoice in the Lord always, even when you don't feel up to it. Rejoice in the Lord anyhow. I said again rejoice, for the Lord is near. And so have no anxiety at all, but in everything, in prayers and petitions and thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. He wants to hear your prayers. Even if you told it him a thousand times, it's tell him anyhow. Again, then the peace of God will guard your hearts and your minds. So therefore, whatever is true, again, these are the normal values, the higher values, I'm saying, not rather, rather than earthly values, Whatever is true, honorable, whatever is just, pure, lovely, gracious, if there's any excellence in anything, if there's anything of worthy of praise, then think about these things. Keep our minds moving upward, you might say, rather than earthbound. And we all do that. We get more in, caught into our iPhones and our technologies and our business dealings and and doing this X, Y, and Z types of things. And those are important. But the thing is that it's really to keep our thoughts moving towards God. Easier said than done. But that's why we pray. That's why we ask God for forgiveness. Then the peace of God will be with you. Then finally, in the gospel passage, this, this is the readings that, that Keith and Rachel have chosen. This is my commandment. Jesus tells us he's, he's at the Last Supper. That means he's not going to be around much longer for them. And he's giving them kind of the last will and testament, you may say. He's telling the last things that they need to remember. Because, because one day he's going to be with them, and next day he's going to be gone and crucified. And they're going to be stunned beyond belief that the Messiah would somehow die. Of course, we know on Easter he rises. And, uh, but for right now, that hasn't become a reality to them. This is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. Jesus loves us with an infinite love. It's not like a, just a mere human love, which you, you and I have. And those are, that's good too. But this is, we're talking about an infinite love. He's willing to do anything, including not only take, coming into, a, into this world in the incarnation, but also taking the sins of the world upon himself, even through crucifixion, all because of love for you, and especially love of God the Father. So love one another as I love you. For no greater love there is than this, that to lay down one's life for one's friends. And basically that's what you're doing in marriage, the wedding ceremony. You're exchanging your single life, Keith, and Rachel, your single life, to a whole different measure. That the Lord may use you now to become a sacrament. Not just to be husband and wife, although that's true, but to be, for, for us as Catholics, to be one of seven sacraments and then become one. And... Uh, so as I, we kind of met the other day, but I was kind of describing in terms of Keith and, and Rachel, sometimes we think we have, we're supposed to be like this. That's true. We're supposed to be like this. But because of the sacrament, what really happens is that God makes us one. 
causes two to become one, even though one's over here, one's over here. To God, they become one. And to live that out. So this is why to lay down one's life for one's friend. So you're exchanging your life, your conveniences, for something that's going to be more difficult. Married life is not an easy life. Now, for you, it'll probably be, be no sweat. But some of the people out here can probably say, next to that, Father, no, it's, it's, it's going to be a tough life. And uh, things are going to put a strain on you, and sometimes you can even wonder, why did I marry this creep? I mean, why did I marry this guy over here? <laughs> but it's going to happen. You know, those doubts. That's why we have to keep our focus. Lord, no, you brought us together. Lord, give us the grace. Lord, you made this happen. Give us the grace to follow through with it. For it was not you who appointed me, but I, it's not you who chose me, but I chose you. In other words, you're not up here by accident or just by your own volition. You're up here as a plan of God. And part of the plan is that you can make a difference in this world. Um, you know, certainly in terms of your jobs and things you're going to be meeting, but basically, hopefully, you can extend God's life within you to the people around you. That's going to change them. Your attitude, your respect, your compassion, your forgiveness, how you go out of the way. Those are the things that change people's hearts. We live in kind of a dark and cruel world these days. To have someone who, who can really honor him and to please him, but to help him honor each other, that people will see. They may not say it, but it becomes noticeable. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, fruit that will remain, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. And so gonna, you need to ask God, you know, for the grace of love for each other. Really, you should be do, doing that, you know, every day of your marriage. Um, right now, there's beaucoup of graces that are there. But I'll, you know, give them another week, you know, so all that. It's going to put, be a kind of trying on things. Keep asking for the graces to, to love him, to love her, to forgive him, to forgive her. Keep asking. God wants to, has a storehouse full of graces, and nobody's asking that. So again, I just, I'll stop here. But tonight, even tonight, before, when the, when the festivity's over, and everyone's gone home, and you're kind of going to your, your I'm not sure where you're going, uh, hotel or something like that, imagine your, your casita, trailer, whatever, I'm not sure what is it. Um, but sometime, kneel down, like Tobiah, kneel down and make a prayer, thanking him for bringing you together, thanking him for your families, thanking the Lord for how he brought you together and how he's nurtured you and blessing you and asking for a new vocation uh, in life and then for the graces you need to live out your life in love with him, in love with each other. It's a good thing to ask. If you can do that, you're doing a good job. You know, we're not going to be perfect. That's a good job where you can do those type of things. So just, you know, it doesn't take a whole lot of you know, special prayers, but I would ask that you do that. And let's see what else. Page two. Okay. Ah, that's good enough. I'll shut up here. All right. I'm going to ask Brian to come forward. Brian, are you there? Oh, there you are. Can, Michael, can I have a... Oh, there it is. Oh, very good. Brian, come on up here, please. Maybe you can, why don't you stand right over here? I'm going to stand over there by the altar. Would that be okay? You take your mask off your ear there. So, Brian, I'm, I'm, going to, I'm just going to ask you several questions. And you can kind of direct it to them, or you can direct it to the folks out here. Direct it to you. Okay. So, Brian, you, you're the older brother of uh, Kevin, is that right? Of Keith, yes. Okay. What, what do I say? Keith, I keep saying, probably it's Keith saying Kevin. Keith. And um, was he a good brother to you? Yes, he was. Are you sure? Okay, okay. <laughs> You never had a hard word between the two of you? Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very good. Let's see. Okay. So, Brian, I better make sure I get his name right here. Um, can you tell me, even though you've had differences and you're older, but you've also had a lifetime together to watch him in different situations and things like this, what would be the one quality that you've always kind of admired about this young man that even though Again, with things and struggles, 
but you've always kind of been impressed by that, maybe even trying to emulate a little bit, wanting to wish you could do that the same thing. What's one great quality and why? Uh, so for Could you Keith, put the microphone a little bit closer to you? So, Keith, for you, it's being so caring with all your friends, loved ones. You're always taking the time out of your day, out of your week, just to spend time with them and make up plans and just be there for them. And that's something that I'd love to be able to get to that point one day in my life. <clears throat> that's a very good admirable. Very well done. Thanks, Brian. Thank you. That's a good quality. Did you know he even thought that? This is good. This is good. <laughs> okay. Brian, tell me one, one thing of kind of warning, 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 Rachel, about, about this young man. <laughs> Something, bewares, Rachel, bewares. For you, Rachel, to be wary of. Keith can at times be a little stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> Never. But... It's all with, you just have to, you know, peel a layer at a time, like an onion, you know, make through and <laughs> break that stubbornness in them, so. Very good. So, stubbornness. Okay, I got you. <laughs> and finally, when they go down the aisle for the first time as husband and wife, what would be the one blessing you would ask of Almighty God that they could have for the rest of their married life together? One blessing and why? I ask that, uh, God bla uh, God's grace on you guys both for your marriage, for all of eternity. I want you guys to um, be happy and just really enjoy the rest of your lives together. So. Well, very good. Well, thanks, Brian. Can we give them, give them a little bit of a round of applause here? Okay, thank, you. thank you. Good job. Usually I give the, the best man the night before to think it over. I saw him just before, five minutes before Matt started, so he done good. Good job. All right. So now I'm going to ask you two to come up and come down here. I'll ask the wedding party to please stand nice and slow. Very good. And if you come, also take your positions as we here in front. And I'm going to come down here, everybody, so that you can see me. He washes up really nice, doesn't he? Dearly beloved, we've come together in the presence of Almighty God to witness and to bless the joining together this man and this woman in holy matrimony. For the bond and covenant of marriage was established by Almighty God in creation, and the Lord Jesus Christ adorned this manner of life by his presence and the first miracle of changing water into wine at the wedding feast of Cana in Galilee. Holy matrimony signifies to us the mystery of the union between Christ and his bride, the church. And Holy Scripture commends it to be honored amongst all God's peoples. For the union of husband and wife, in heart, in mind, and in body, is intended by God for the mutual joy, for the help and comfort given one another in prosperity and adversity, and when it's God's will, for the procreation of children in the nurture and the knowledge and love of the Lord. Therefore, Marriage is not to be entered into undividedly or lightly, but reverently, deliberately, and in accordance with the purposes for which it was instituted by God. Keith, Rachel, have you come together in this church so the Lord may seal and strengthen your love in the, church, in the presence of the church minister and this community? Have you, Christ already abundantly blesses you in this love. He's also consecrated you in the gift of baptism, and now he enriches you and strengthens you by a special sacrament, so that you may be able to assume the duties of marriage with mutual and lasting fidelity. And so, in the presence of Almighty God, the Church, and these, your friends and community, I ask you to state your intentions. So even though Father Joe is asking the question, it's really God who's asking the questions. Keith, will you have this woman to be your wife? to live together in the covenant of marriage? Will you love her, comfort her, honor and keep her, 
in sickness and in health, forsaking all others as long, be faithful to her as long as you both shall live? I will. Rachel, will you have this man to be your husband, to live together in the covenant of marriage? And will you love him, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, be faithful to him as long as you both shall live? I will. And will both of you accept children lovingly from God and bring them up according to the law of Christ Jesus and his church? We will. Okay. So since it's your intention in entering marriage, you're joining your right hands, that's a good sign, and declare your consent for God and his church. So Keith, I'll begin with you, and I'll be also using your baptismal name during this time. So in the name of God. In the name of God. I, Keith Anthony. I, Keith Anthony. Take you, Rachel Carney. Take you, Rachel Carney. To be my wife. To be my wife. I promise to be true to you. I promise to be true to you. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better or worse. For better or for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Until we are parted by death. Until we are parted by death. Rachel, next. In the name of God. In the name of God. I, Rachel Carney. I, Rachel Carney. Take you, Keith Anthony. Take you, Keith Anthony. To be my husband. To be my husband. I promise to be true to you. I promise to be true to you. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse. For better or for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Until we are parted by death. Until we are parted by death. You have declared your consent before God and the church. May the Lord now his goodness strengthen your vow and fill you both with his blessing. What God has joined together, no one must divide. What I'm going to do now is this going to come along the back side here, and uh, this is going to give you a special blessing. So we can put your hands together if you would on this. Oops, not yet. <laughs> Whew. I, almost, I almost put a taboo on this thing. Okay. So I'm, we have the blessing of the wedding rings, and then we'll do the benediction. Thank you. Oh, these are really, these are nice. <laughs> Came art, I mean, uh, yeah. seriously though, you know, Catholics uh, have what we call seven sacraments. I'm not going to give you a big theolo theology course here, but we have what's called sacraments that, that really is Christ who do, does the various things in our life, bringing us into the life of the Blessed Trinity, uh, giving us His Holy Spirit more pronounced way, having his, 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 uh, uh, some hosts and wines become his body and blood and so forth like this. We also have what's called sacramentals. Sacraments give grace. Sacramentals don't give grace, but they can open us to grace. For example, as Catholics, we got statues. We got pictures like St. Joseph over here. We have, a, we have a holy water, rosaries. You who are familiar with Catholics know we got a lot of stuff. But all this stuff has a purpose, however. If it can bring us closer to God, if we use it. Otherwise, it's just stuff. So the church blesses now wedding rings to be a sign of the vows, to become a sacramental, to remind the, the wearer of who he or she is and to, with those around of who or she is. But it's meant to me remind us of our vocation as a husband or wife, that what my, my, my vocation is is to be for my wife, to be my, for my husband, and to do that all the days of life. We probably won't do it perfectly. That's okay. But to do our best. So we're going to do now bless the wedding rings here. Now, 
Lord, bless these rings to be a sign of the vows by which this man and this woman have bound themselves to each other. Grant that those who wear them may always have a deep faith and commitment to each other and to you. May they live to do your will, to live always together in peace, goodwill, and love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy water. Okay. So I'm going to start with, with you, Keith. You can probably put that together a little bit. And then if you would again repeat after me as you slip this on her wedding fingers, nice and slowly. Rachel, I give you this ring. Rachel, I give you this ring. It's a sign of my love and my fidelity. It's a sign of my love and my fidelity. And with all that I am. And all that I am. And all that I have. And all that I have. I honor you. I honor you. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Very good. Rachel, you would also repeat after me. Keith, I give you this ring. Keith, I give you this ring. As a sign of my love and my fidelity. As a sign of my love and my fidelity. And with all that I have. Excuse me, all that I am. And in all that I am. And all that I have. And all that I have. I honor you. I honor you. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Very good. I'll try this again. Most gracious God, we give you thanks for your tender love in sending Jesus Christ to come among us, to be born of a human mother, to make the way of the cross to be the way of life. We thank you also for consecrating the union of man and woman in his name. By the power of your Holy Spirit, pour out the abundance of your blessings upon this man and this woman. Lord, defend them from every enemy. Lead them into peace. Let the love for each other be a seal upon their hearts, a mantle about their shoulders, and a crown upon their foreheads. Father, bless them in their work and in their companionship, in their sleeping and in their waking, in their joys and in their sorrows, in their life and in their death. Finally, Heavenly Father, in your infinite mercy, bring them to that table where your saints feast forever in your heavenly home. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Congratulations. So, so now I'm going to do, we're going to have a, what's called prayers of the faithful. I think we have a special reader for that. These are prayers where we, um, we pray for this young couple. We also pray for families. So I'm going to ask you all please to stand if you'd be so kind to do that. But we petition God for the special graces they need, for people also we know and love, and things happening in the world around us. The response is, Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. For their relatives and friends, and for all who have assisted this couple, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For young people preparing to enter marriage, and for all whom the Lord is calling to another state in life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all families throughout the world, and for lasting peace among all people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all members of our families who have passed from this world, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, the holy people of God, and for unity among all Christians, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, Pour out your blessings upon this husband and wife, the spirit of your love, to make them one heart and one soul, so nothing whatever may divide them 
those you have joined together. No harm come to those that you have filled with your blessings. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So I'm going to ask you please be seated. Wedding party, please be seated. You all please be seated as well. And I'll have you two come up here. So now we're going to have some uh, offertory gifts brought up. Just basically a little bit of some hosts and, uh, and a little bit of wine. I'll explain here in a few moments what we're going to be doing with that. Please stand now, and if you two would mind heading down to the kneeler down that way. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours now may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands to the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all his holy church. And receive, we pray, O Lord, the offering made on this most wonderful occasion of the sealing of the sacred bond of marriage. And just as your goodness is its origin... May your providence be its guide in, in this, along its course. All this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, and your, with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We'll lift them up to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have forged the covenant of marriage as a sweet yoke of harmony and as an unbreakable bond of peace. So the chaste and fruitful love of holy matrimony may serve to increase the children you adopt as your own. For by your providence and grace, O Lord, you accomplish the wonder of this twofold design, that while the birth of children brings beauty to the world, the rebirth in baptism has increased your church. Through Christ, through him, with the angels and all the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim and sing.
ask you please to kneel if you can, if you're Catholic. If you're not Catholic, just be seated. Be comfortable. If you're, if you're Catholic and are able to do so, if you can, kneel. But again, if you can't, that's fine too. Um, I'm going to be asked here momentarily for the Holy Spirit to come upon the elements of bread and wine that they become our Lord's precious body and our Lord's precious blood. Even though appearance-wise they remain the same, appearances, but the essence actually changes, what we call the substance changes. So we're looking, this is kind of a formal prayer, what we call a liturgy, liturgy of the Eucharist. For you are indeed holy, O Lord, and the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For at the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. So for a few moments, the priest holds up, holds up the consecrated host at the time of adoration and thanksgiving. And then he genuflects, also as a sign of reverence, before the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith We eat his bread And drink his cup We proclaim the death of the Lord Until he come again Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, O Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, and giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. And humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may gather into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, O Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, who's our Pope, and Samuel, who's our local bishop, his assistant bishop, Orhe, and all the clergy, the various clergy men and women who are represented here from different faiths and traditions as well. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, Lord, all those who have died in your mercy, and welcome them into the light of your face. Lord, have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, to be married, to be co heirs to eternal life, we praise and glorify you for your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. you please now stand. We're going to pray the Lord's Prayer, the Our Father. Again, if, you, uh, if you're uncomfortable about these things, you can certainly remain, remain seated. 
But let's just go and try to pray the Lord's Prayer together as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. So now I'm going to give what's called a nuptial blessing. Michael is going to help me here momentarily. This is a special blessing that we pray for this young couple. So if you two would kneel down, be so kind. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly pray to the Lord that on these his servants, now married in Christ, he may mercifully pour out the blessings of his grace and make of one heart in love, and by the sacrament of Christ's body and blood, those he has joined in a holy covenant. Okay, excuse me. Okay. Much better. O God, who by your mighty power created all things out of nothing, and when you had set in place the beginnings of the universe, you formed man and woman in your own image, making the woman an inseparable helpmate to the man, that they, don't be not, they might no longer be two, but one flesh. And you taught that you were pleased to make one, but that what you made one must never be divided. O God, who consecrated the bond of marriage by so great a mystery, that in the wedding covenant you foreshadowed the sacrament of Christ and his bride, the church. O God, by whom woman is joined to man, and the companionship they had at the beginning is now endowed with the one blessing, but that was not forfeited by original sin, nor washed away by the flood. Look now upon with favor upon these your servants, joined together in, mar in marriage, who ask to be strengthened by your blessing. Send down upon them, we pray, the grace of the Holy Spirit, and pour your love into their hearts, that he remain faithful in the marriage covenant. May the grace of love and peace abide now in this daughter of yours, Rachel. Let her always follow the example of these holy women, of those holy men and women, women who are praises of you are sung in the scriptures. May he, her husband, now entrust his heart to her and acknowledge that her as his equal and join heir to her through the grace, life of grace, that he may show her due honor and cherish her always with the love that Christ has for his church. And now, O Lord, we implore you, may these two servants of yours hold fast to the faith and keep your commandments. Made one in the flesh, may they be blameless in all they do. And with the strength that comes from the gospel, may they bear true witness to Christ before all. And may they also be blessed with children and prove themselves to be virtuous parents, to live, the, to live to see the children's children. And grant finally, Father, that reaching at last together the fullness of years, for which we pray we may be hope, they may come to the last, to the life of the final blessedness and kingdom of heaven. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay, thank you. So normally we would have the sign of peace, but we're going to go right now into the Lamb of God.
invite you to be seated or kneel accordingly to your faith traditions. Be seated or kneel accordingly to your faith traditions. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy. You should enter into my room. But only say the word, and I shall, my soul shall be healed. In the body of Christ, keep me safe for eternal life. And may the blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. In a few moments, I'll be giving Holy Communion to Keith and Rachel. I know we call the species of our Lord's precious body. And, um, and I'll, so I have the other half of the host, which I'll break in half here momentarily. And then we're going to have an opportunity to receive Holy Communion for the rest of us. It will remain kneeling here, but the rest can come forward. Michael will help here, with, uh, here in a few moments, I think. And uh, otherwise I can be, I guess, uh, I can, well, yeah, I think, Michael, you can help out if you would. I'll go up to get the, another ciborium. But um, uh, if you're not Catholic, I would ask you not to receive uh, communion because there's things that we hold in common, but some things we're not quite there yet. So if you're not Catholic, I would ask you please not to receive Holy Communion. If you want to come and give a blessing, I can do that. Uh, I mean, can I scoot over to my line, I guess you might say. But otherwise, just remain in the pews there and ask uh, God to come to you in, in communion according to your, your understanding of that because he'll always do that. God's that way. So, so I'm going to first come up here and uh, get a ciborium so Michael can help me a little bit. And then I'll, uh, and then we'll have uh, our cantor lead us in a communion song here momentarily. Time to maintain these regrets 
what I think about the way that he loves me. Please be seated if you're not already. And Lord, we do thank you so much. For the time of Holy Communion. Lord, a number of us perhaps come from different faith traditions and understandings. Yet, Lord, we know this much. We need you. We personally need you and our families need you. Our communities, even our churches need you. And this world needs you. So, Lord, we ask you to come to us in spiritual Holy Communion, that, Lord, we can be strengthened and nourished by you, forgiven by you. Lord, to know you more and more, to spend time in prayer with you. Lord, sometimes we promise prayer, but we don't always own up to it very well. So, Lord, help us again on this special day for for Keith and Rachel to bless, not only bless them, but to ask your blessings upon all of us, that what they have begun in a certain way, begins with each of us. This is a new day for us. So, Lord, we thank you for, again, for this young couple. Keep them safe. In a very special way, we offer this communion for them, uh, for the safety, the protection, for the love of each other, especially the love of you. Lord, keep them ever close to your sacred heart, Lord Jesus. And that, too, of the immaculate heart, the Virgin Mary. Amen. So can I ask you all please to stand now? So we now we have a prayer after communion. I ask Michael to hold this for me. And grant us, we pray, Almighty God, that the power of the sacrament we have just now received may find growth in these your servants, that the effects of the sacrifice we have offered may be felt by all of us. All this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So I'm going to ask our wedding party to please come forward now at this time. Have a little threefold blessing. And then we're going to send them on their way. May God, would you all please, you all understand, okay. May God the Eternal Father keep keep you of one heart in love for one another. The peace of Christ may always dwell within you and abide always in your home. Amen? Amen. May you be blessed in your children and have solace in your friends and enjoy true peace with everyone. Amen? And finally, may you be witnesses to the world, to God's charity, so the afflicted and the needy who have known your kindness may one day 
receive you thankfully into the eternal dwelling of God in heaven. Amen? Amen. The blessings of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and your families. Be with you forever and ever. Amen. So I'd like to introduce to you for the first time is Dr. and Mrs. Keith Christian. Yay! Kiss, kiss, kiss. Thank you.